right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Give it up for yourselves, Emerald City Comic Con. Woo! Okay, y'all, we're here, sorry. Right. Well, I'm sitting here and now I feel like an asshole that I'm just standing here. That's good. This is very casual. Okay, first of all, uh, let me introduce the wonderful Brony Tastic. Yeah. Katie Cook. Hi. This is a good time to mention that I say a lot of things that are not child friendly. <laughs> you no just bad. write children's comics. Yeah. I just write. Uh, Comics about ponies and cute little monsters and whatnot. Can I, can I just mention, by the way, last year, how many of you were here in last year's convention horse story panel? And you came back? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and do you remember how much she was ripping on the pony fandom and she was ripping on I did not. Fans? I called them racist, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just clarify. So you said all those things. And I knew I was writing a comic. Oh, did you already? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I was just gonna say, at what moment did you realize? No, but she already knew. I already knew. I already She's got a mind like a clock. Line up. That's good. I like that. That's good. Wow, so can I just trash talk a bunch of stuff and next year I'll tell you I'm writing all those things? Because yeah, if that's the power that this panel has, I'm gonna start talking a lot of shit about Batman. <laughs> oh, that bastard. A spoiled rich kid with issues. That's what he is. My parents are dead. Get over it. All right. Anyway, we all got well, it. welcome, welcome to the convention horror stories panel. If you're here, you're already part of the experience. <laughs> so, what? For those of you who haven't been here before and were somehow lured here with the promise of candy, there is none. But oh, oh crap! <laughs> See the powers that Katie has. It's incredible stuff. Oh yes, just start hooking those. That was over. <laughs> Don't do that. No. I read an article. Sugar's toxic. You're killing those people. What do you think? Oh, I got one. Sorry. Killing you softly with your song. Uh, they're going to call security in here. There's only like three pieces left. So we don't get any? Oh, my God. I'm a diabetic and bring me, bring me cookies all day. It's like, you don't want me to die. How did you fill up this room again? What did you do? I'd like to mention that last night Jeff Parker brought whiskey to a panel, so I think he's, the bar has been set pretty high. Damn! I've got like someone's flat. That's mine. Oh. That's not flat yet. It's warm. Uh, mm. yeah. Warm Diet Coke. That sounds like convention. Warm Diet Coke. <laughs> Yesterday when I started to get the shakes, I'd have like a ginger cookie and I was like, man, you know what I could use? Sustenance. Was, anyways, once you go to, how many conventions, we said this last year, how long have you been going to conventions for? This is my ninth year. <laughs> Give it up for Gary, Gary, you poor thing. I am only 31 years old. You have ruined me. But now, so I'm, uh, this is my 11th year of conventioneering. And uh, last year I did the most conventions I've ever done. Why did I How do that? How many was it? It's 16. Oh, I did 15. 16 oh, conventions. I have 15 again this year. And, the, 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 and I have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> like she says that with a maniacal look on her face. And, and you just heard the husband. gasps. They're like, you raise a child? Well, it's like, after this panel, if you've never heard me, you're like, who oh, let her have a child? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, now, if some of you have been here since last year, I don't know if we'll be tripping over some of the same material. Oh, but... I'm going to. I okay. just rehashed the same the... story over and over and over until it's dead. That's called rebooting. That's comic books. And then he died at the end. <laughs> until he came back. And then he was alive. <laughs> and he had a different case. But so we're gonna, so I'm sure we'll trip over some of the same material, and then if you compare notes, you'll be like, that's not exactly what they said at all. But then there's some new material I've actually been gathering through osmosis. I have one from yesterday. You get okay. one that's fresh. Too soon, too soon. No, I hope he's in this room. Okay, but first, <laughs> before. Because he needs to know. <laughs> dark places, I think it's important that we, um, that we pr proclaim our own stupidity and geekery, and, mm -hmm. and because we are not immune. I think people get the idea that working in this industry puts you on some sort of a pedestal, that you are beyond oh foolishness. <laughs> First of all, we're on this panel, so right there, that is off the table. We are no foolish. Shame. 
ruining our careers in 45 minutes. That should have been the I've read children's books. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't sworn yet. I, really... I, I called you an asshole when you didn't well, show Oh, I guess up. that's pretty good. Anyways, <laughs> they put that in kids' books now, don't they? Yeah. They put what the fuck on a cover of a DC You can book say shit now. after 7 p.m. on cable television. Really? It's amazing. It's 7 p.m. somewhere, people. Let's get this shit on. Okay, so, um, so well, let's tell you a couple stories about our own um, failings as human beings. I think it's important. It is important. So I, because I'm uh, courageous, why don't you go first? All right. Uh, I have many embarrassing things that I've done at conventions. Uh, one of my favorites is because, uh, you know, we're fans. We're comic book fans. And I don't know. I, I hate everybody. <laughs> but uh, That's why sometimes you see someone that you like, you look at them and you're like, <laughs> oh, that guy. <laughs> like and, a cosplayer? No. Oh, I'm talking okay. about like someone you put on a pedestal. And mine is, I think I even told the story last year, is because uh, Steve Purcell is a man that I love and I adore. And now he's gotten like too big for me to even like geek out over. Uh, he did Sam and Max, and now he also co directed Brave. But I was across from him at San Diego Comic Con one year. And I kept looking at him all week, and I was like, hi. <laughs> I am sitting across from you. Let me, let me just tell you, there's nothing worse, because at least before the convention starts or after hours, there's sort of this sense of like safety, where you're like, well, the people aren't here yet. But when they also have an exhibitor badge, that's yeah. the worst. And so they're um, staring at you, and they know they actually can't escape. Whenever he didn't have a line, I would go over there and try to talk to him, and I would end up standing slack-jawed, slightly drooling, going, I'm a big fan. <laughs> and then I would lose my nerve, and I'd go back and sit across from him, <laughs> like eight feet away. And I did this for five days straight, until finally I said, I would like to buy that print. And he kind of went, Okay, what's your name? Because he was marking that down for the police report. Well, it's that, and I looked across at my banner going, That! It's like, it's like, it's like me there! And finally, this poor guy was just like, Katie! Okay! To Katie! Steve! Like, no, because I had seen him all weekend going, you know, friends, Steve, you know, with respect, Steve. Like, even just anything, like a little drawing of Sam and Max, and it was like, I just got Steve. It's like, get the fuck away from me. And it was just one of those, and finally I sat back down, and I was still like, I talked to him, and he said my name. <laughs> yeah! And you just took the poster and just sort of rubbed it on your face. I actually like, kind of like rubbed it in my hair. It's good. It's good. And my husband the whole time looked at me like, what <laughs> the hell? <laughs> because I am normally quite cool and calm and collected, which is what being the captain of the Quiz Bowl team in high school prepares you for. <laughs> And I was not that weekend, and that has repeated itself several times, especially with Joss Whedon in an airport. Joss Whedon? That's, see, that sounds like a great uh, Me and Joss Whedon in an airport. Well, it's especially when you pass him and you're like, You fly, coach! <laughs> wow! You're like a normal person! I, okay, I, gotta, I got an addendum on that. San Diego Comic Con. This is what, three years ago? They just announced that he was the director of The Avengers. Uh, that day, he was going to be directing a little old movie called The Avengers. People go batshit insane. And that night, I'm out at uh, one of the industry parties, and there's a big line out up front. Everyone's wandering around. And all of, it's this really cool thing. Because, you know, so many faces are going by, and your, your ability to recognize someone slips. So you see someone, you go, I know that person. From Fame! <laughs> so I, it's like, you know, the dog from uh, Up, you know, squirrel, you're just like, famous person. That's, that's where you're like, were you on television or no, no, and then you freak out, right? So we're sitting there in front of a building waiting to get into this party, and we're all just hanging there, duh, duh, duh. and then you could see like four people have that moment at the same time, because they all recognized Joss was just walking down the street by himself. Oh. What a mistake on the gaslight district of San Diego. So he's just walking, duh, 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 and all of a sudden someone goes, that's Jaws. 
and then I'll roll this. And just these little, like the meerkats. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone in line just shoots up. And you could see him. He does, it was awesome. Because he, it's like he forgot he was just weeding. It was so fucking cool. He's walking and he's like. <laughs> it's, it, it, it goes from like sanity, like I'm power walking to I gotta get an alley. That is a gun and a rooftop. I mean, it's from the and it was so like I felt awful, oh, but it, but simultaneous, it's like human condition. Like this is amazing. He's gonna die. They're gonna take parts of his flesh, wear it around the con. I have his power in me. That's why like San Diego is amazing for the. Those things because it well, was well not for them no. for us uh, <laughs> for ago, degenerates a couple, a couple years ago because people just walk around and I was walking down people the street, just walk around walk, I like, like you say that like in other places people don't walk around they slouch <laughs> but I was walking uh, around the, in the gas lab district and all of a sudden I saw John Lasseter and Hayao Miyazaki oh. two people that you're like the oh. <laughs> and not a lot of people always recognize them, so they walked right past me, and they actually split to walk around me, and I just kind of went. <gasps> so if you could have actually you could have put out both arms, and, and, then, could, I, and then you'd have completed the well, circuit. And then, the thing that I'm doing is like, I want a picture, I want a picture, and all I can do is turn around and go, Oh my God! What? You made Kiki. <laughs> And, oh. and another guy, too, who did some stuff. <laughs> it's like, I knew. Didn't you work at Disney before you went to that other place? I like your shirt. Is that Hawaiian? <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we do dumb things. We do dumb things. Because comic book artists are not the most social. Yeah, we didn't get into this because we're socially well-balanced. <laughs> but, it, but it's amazing, too, because you also realize that no matter how jaded and you're hopefully not jaded and we're not i'm jaded anyways hopefully you're not too jaded but every so often you'll meet someone or you'll have an interaction that's really quite phenomenal and it reminds you of how awesome this industry can be or the the reason why we're all into this stuff is because we're passionate we're passionate about creativity we're passionate about art we're passionate about stories we're passionate about characters mm -hmm. and when you're reminded of that when you interact with someone who had a big effect on your life Man, there's nothing, nothing better. And then you make a terrible uh, scene of it, and you fuck it all up, and there's nothing worse. There's and nothing never deeper in the parties. heart of disaster than that. That's why I never go out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Can't trust yourself. No. That's good. So um, I had a, uh, I think I, I, I think I said this story last year. It sort of popped my uh, comic celebrity cherry on the poor master of dreams on uh, Neil Gaiman. Oh. Uh, man. See, I just say his name and it's like a warm glow washes over. Uh, you know, a high school kid growing up uh, with Sandman uh, meant so much to me in terms of the writing, in terms of the characters, in terms of the outsider feeling and, and someone speaking, pulling your thoughts out of your head and, and writing stories that mean so much to you. And so, um, I'd become friends with uh, Scott McCloud, who did Understanding Comics and all sorts of stuff like that. This is my second San Diego Comic Con, so this is 2002, I want to say. And so I'm there at the show, and uh, I see Scott, and he's like, oh, you got to come. There's a party tonight over, um, it's going to be great. There's going to be uh, Neil Gaiman and Frank Miller and Will Eisner and on and on and on. I'm just like, I will go to this place. <laughs> and so it was at this uh, Irish pub uh, downtown called the Dublin Square in uh, San Diego. And so I, I tell all my friends, I'm like, we gotta go to this party. And they said, I can bring people and we gotta go, we gotta go, go. So I gather up like three of us and, uh, cause that's all the friends I had at that point. So then, uh, so, we go, <laughs> so we go to the, to the bar, like, and I don't know what I was expecting. Like I was expecting I was gonna walk in and be like, yo, Frank. Sin City, you fucking rock! Like, I, I, I don't know why I thought it was going to be like intimate. I always think it's going to be like that. Intimate. Anyway, so I, I show up at the bar and it's fucking chaos. So there's there's people like easily breaking fire code. It's a it's an open party for the comic book legal defense fund, and the more it was all for charity. So everyone was invited. It's not like I had a gold plated invitation. It was for everybody. So the whole place was under siege. So there were people pouring out of the windows and the 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 uh, you know on the patios, just people everywhere, psychotic. So I'm like, well, we gotta go, we gotta go. So we push our way in, and it's just like salmon. Swimming 
swimming upstream, and it's the worst feeling ever. I get to the bar, and it's for charity, so all the booze is double priced. One, you pay for the beer, and then the second half goes to charity. But you don't feel very charitable when you're paying $16 for a beer. So, um, you know, you pay 16 bucks for a beer, and I'm a poor art student, and you can't talk to anyone because it's like, Imagine if we pushed all these people into a room one quarter the size and then said, now move rapidly and talk and spill beer on each other. And so it was just this unending stream of, ooh, I'm sorry, oh, I, can I, oh, I see my friend, hey! And you're screaming and yelling, it was just the worst thing ever. And I'm like, this fucking sucks. Charity's wonderful, but this sucks. I have to get out of here. So I start trying to move through and it's not working and nothing's happening. And so finally I start pushing and pushing and pushing. And then I start kind of throwing elbows. I'm like, look, you want me to leave because I'm a jackass. Let me leave. <laughs> so I'm just pushing and pushing and pushing. And then I shoulder check Scott McCloud. <laughs> Thankfully, my friend. So I just check him and I go, oh my God. And he's like, oh, Jim, whoa. And he doesn't fall because there's too many people. So he just sort of <laughs> and then he, they'd say, he goes, what are you doing? I said, this party's crazy. We gotta get out of here. Um, we gotta go. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll come with you. Because Scott's like the nicest guy on earth. And if you say, we're doing this, he's like, well, I'll do that. So uh, he says, I just gotta say hi to a couple people. I'm like, oh, okay, who? He goes, oh, Will and Neil and Frank and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, where are they? Oh, they're upstairs on the second floor where no one's allowed to go because there's a bouncer there. And it's like guest list only. Oh, so I'm in the same room, like building, as Frank Miller and Neil Gaiman. Uh -huh. Which is like right now, I'm in the same building as Jillian Anderson and stuff, but I'm not. Ooh, that's kind of awesome. Actually, no, but, but, but so it's kind of so I'm like, oh, and so he starts going up. He goes over to the door, and there's like nerd. When I say they're bouncers, it's not like they're like the thing. It's like a nerd. There's just like a guy there, and they look at him. Oh, Mr. McCloud. Oh, I wish I had my understanding comics on me. You know. So, and he just goes upstairs, and he's halfway upstairs, he looks back and he goes, Oh, those guys are with me. Oh. <laughs> right? So we walk upstairs, and there's shitloads of empty seats, and there's like a bunch of waiters getting beers for people, and I'm just vibrating like, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> and uh, this guy's like, hey, this is great up here. Do you want to grab a seat? We can get some food. Yes. <laughs> So we sit down and I'm just like, they're gonna kick me out, they're gonna kick me out, they're gonna kick me out, they're just gonna know. Sucks. <laughs> You've never made anything. <laughs> you know? So uh, we're just sitting there and Scott's like, oh, is there anyone you wanna meet? And my friend uh, Ray, Ray Fox, the guy who's now writing Constantine for DC. See, even horrific nerds can make it in life. So we're sitting there and he, um, <laughs> Ray goes, oh, Jim wants to talk to Neil. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, I do, but no, no, like, no rush, because I actually don't know how I'm going to function. And so I start talking about how I don't know how I'm going to be able to function. What I don't know is behind me is Neil Gaiman walking up, because he's friends with Scott. So it's like uh, um, Scott's kids, uh, Neil is their godfather and stuff. And so they've been friends for years and years and years. So he just beelines over behind me. So as I'm saying, give me a few minutes to pull my shit together. I don't know if I can actually deal with this. I just finished reading American Gods, and I love the book, and he's a huge inspiration. And now he's reaching over me <laughs> to shake Scott's hand. And I just see this arm, and I'm, for a moment, I'm like, what the fuck? Is? And then I look up, and it's just like, shh, like brain shatter out the side, moves my mind, and I just go, huh, ah, like this one. And, and so I guess I thought the look on my face was awe. The look on that he got was like, who the fuck are you? So he sort of looks over and, and Scott goes, oh, Jim, this is my friend Jim and Ray. And uh, Neil leans over and he goes, oh, hello there, I'm Neil. And I'm just like, yeah. And I kind of look at him and shake his hand. And I want to say, your work is a huge inspiration to me. You know, uh, you helped me to get through high school without killing people and you're a phenomenal person. And, uh, you, uh, you glow with uh, the light of inspiration. And what I said was, Oh, <laughs> and then he says, I'm a writer. <laughs> to which I want to say, yes, I know, you're the master of dreams, and you carved out parts of my mind, and you changed my world, and you're the greatest person ever. And I go, cool. <laughs> and then he, and he did the awkward, awkward pregnant pause, and then he leans over to Ray, and Ray goes, oh, big fan. Oh, yeah, great to meet you. And so he just shakes their hands, and well, Scott, I'm going to go get you to be at the bar. And he just wanders off. And I'm sitting there, struck dead, and I'm just looking, 
Scott McCloud, by the way, is like everyone's uncle, father. Like he would never say a nasty word. And he just looks over at me and goes, whoa, Jim, you lost your shit. <laughs> Can you imagine the understanding comics guy telling you that? So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I really did. I, just, I, fucking, I had it all together and I just, I, why did you do that to me? And so I was sitting there and I was so upset and I was like, oh God, I'm such a loser. And, and then uh, I said, well, you know, uh, I, I, I gotta leave. I'm totally embarrassed. And Scott looks over me and he goes, no, you need to go talk to him right now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> he goes, look, he's, a, he's like alone at the bar. Just go get him a drink and talk to him. He's a super nice guy. He's the nicest guy. And I said, no, if I do that, no, how am I gonna explain it? He goes, well, you walk over and you go, hello, Mr. Gaiman, I really like your work. And I go, no, I can't do that. And he goes, but if you don't, will you regret it? <laughs> All right, balls in hand, right? So I just get up, wander over there, and I say, uh, you know, uh, 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 hello there, Mr. Gaiman. And he goes, oh, hello. And, um, I sorry I didn't talk to you before. I just uh, I was really caught off guard. Uh, I'm actually a huge fan of your work, and I really love American Gods. And, and uh, I was just awestruck. I was kind of blown away. And he goes, oh, don't call me uh, Mr. Gaiman. That's my father. My name's Neil. And I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> and we talked for about 20 minutes about American Gods and story structure and creativity and. It was one of the best moments. It was just totally like refill the Energizer battery on me. And at the very end, I said, can I, uh, do you mind if I get a photo? And he said, oh, no, it's fine. And so uh, Ray takes a photo of me. It's one of my favorite convention photos of all time. Not making this up. Uh, he grabs me around the shoulder like we're drinking buddies, at which moment I go. <laughs> <laughs> and swear to God, he's wearing a shirt that says, believe in your dreams. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> And I have that photo on my wall there by my working area, and I just look up and I go, I look like such a fucking idiot. <laughs> uh, to segue into uh, stories. So first of all, we're fucking idiots. Yeah. That's well, what I was going to segue about. into stories about other people. Yeah, now that we've destroyed yeah, now ourselves. That no, no one has any respect Now we're going to turn us. the guns back um, around. I'm going to start it with one I didn't tell last year. Oh, good. I but, can do uh, one too. Yeah. But uh, this was at San Diego a few years ago, and uh, this was someone else's interacting with celebrities. I was at this party with another artist friend of mine, and she was being hit on by Lou Ferrigno. Oh, wow. With a little bit like this. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Um, Did he bend like a plastic pipe in front of him? <laughs> but uh, the, the I funny thing is that... Ferrigno story, this is awesome. So going. <laughs> he waits for the bus at San Diego. Does he? Yeah. That's awesome. But, Does uh, he then lift it over his head? <laughs> Does he run while flexing? Like but the uh, but thing about this friend is that, you know, she's a lesbian and she said, oh, I'm sorry, I don't hit for that team. And he went, you sleep with the Hulk. I'll turn you around. <laughs> what? Gamma radiation will change your preferences. <laughs> and that is my Lou Ferrigno story, yeah. which everybody who has been doing conventions for a decade has. That's brutal. Um, I have a funny, horrible, funny Lou Ferrigno story. This is like uh, Dragon Con, maybe five, six years ago, and we. Mm, now I'm starting to regret telling this story. Don't drink at conventions, kids. Uh, we might have had some vodka for breakfast. <laughs> like you do. We were a little, it was, it was a very hard show. So we were a little uh, punch drunk without the punch. So we were, we were pretty out of it, and we get to the show, and this was the year that they first released those green foam, the Hulk hands, and you'd slam them together, and they'd go, rah, rah, and when you're drunk, everything, you're, gonna, it's like, you're like a 12-year-old, everything's funny 4,000 fucking times. And one of my buddies was doing handstands with them, so I'm like, and then, so we, these were our various things. At one point, he took out a pocket knife and he carved out a beer cozy spot. So he could put a beer in it, and then the, and the foam went, oh. They were pretty awesome. So, um, so we were like, someone, we're just hanging out, everyone's chatting, and someone goes, 
dude, Lou Ferrigno's here. And we're like, of course he is. Why did you forget? <laughs> and you've got to get him to wear the beard crazy book hands and get a photo with all of us, like, screaming. It seemed like a great idea at the time. And so we'd like gather up a posse of like nine people and we're like, Lou Ferrigno, Hulk hands, oh, and we're just like, this is gonna be the greatest thing on earth. We're gonna be gods. And we just pull everyone together and we're just like, dun, dun, dun. and we were a march and people got out of our way. They're like, these fuckers are on a mission. Stan Lee must be behind yeah. them. And he's like, Excelsior, you know, we just, we're moving. It was intense. We get down there and Lou, Lou's there and he doesn't have a line and we just walk over and we're vibrating and drunk and stupid and we're just like, uh, Mr. Ferrigno, sir, we, uh, we, we all are big fans of, uh, we grew up on the Hulk TV show and we want to get a photo with you and you have to wear these. <laughs> and he just looks at us and then he says this, like, fucking cut through us. He just goes, oh, you know, I've had some people ask me before to, uh, with the Hulk hands, but I promised my, uh, my son, you know, uh, he said to me, Daddy, why do they make these weird gloves? And I told him I would never wear them because these are the real Hulk hands. That is a promise to your kid that you don't Yeah, and so we were like, what? <laughs> no, dude, just like put them on and go like, rawr, like it's cool. And he's like, no. <laughs> and we go, but like it's fucking awesome. <laughs> and he's like, oh. These are real, real Hulk hands. You want a photo? I will pose. And we were just like, put on the gloves. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I, prom I promised my son. And we were like, oh. We have like a hundred bucks. Like, you know, did you break your promise to your son for our momentary amusement? Like, we're, we're drunk shitheads, you have to do this. And he didn't, and it was the most awkward standoff, because we were just like, <laughs> one of my buddies keeps hitting them. So while we're the bar table, all you hear is, Rrr! Rrr! And we're just like, shut up, dude, shut up, shut up. And he's like, we're in the and he's just like, no. <laughs> And we slunk away like the most loser. God, how did this story be about us sucking again? This is supposed to be about you. Why is it about you? All right, all right, all right. No. I am going all to. All stories are about me being no. a shithead. I will. Uh, I will go back because this is a this is a favorite. People <laughs> come back to this story for months after I told it last time. Does anyone remember McClaw? McClaw. McClaw. Oh, McClaw. Who remembers McClaw? They, no, they purged that out of their genetic code. Yeah, you should. You better bring it back. So this is the story about the first time I met a furry. Oh. Because I didn't know. So well, they're going to hiss at you. Why did you do that? This is why children aren't allowed in this band. <laughs> and I, uh, I was at my first show, and I was really excited. I was like, oh, I'm a comic book artist. Yay! I'm going to have a table, and I'm going to draw commissions, and I have a print that's unlicensed. And it's almost, I'm a copyright breaker. <laughs> I'm a badass. I had an apple cheek glow about me because I had just left college. And the very first person that comes up to me is this kind of wiry guy. And he goes, Are you doing commissions? I like your style. And I was like, Yes, yes, <laughs> I am. And I give him my ring. He goes, That's great. And he pulls out all of these, you know, Polaroids, which, you know, there's there's no kids in this room. So you guys actually know what Polaroids are. <laughs> and it's of this white Siberian tiger mascot costume. And he says, This is McClaw. He's very majestic. <laughs> and sensual. And then he points to the loincloth and he said, that's removable. <laughs> and I looked at my then fiance and said, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I got up and I left for an hour. Do you know what the best part of it is? McClough was probably like, she's so turned on, she has to go. <laughs> do you want to know the best part? He comes back and visits me every time I do that show. Oh. <laughs> And the same guy last year asked me if I would draw a genie pony dominating Fluttershy. <laughs> which I did not do. <laughs> he is the one percent of bronies that I don't like. I like 99% of them, but he had a manifesto. <laughs> it was in a uh, college rule notebook about how I should handle the characters. He wrote this for me after it was announced that I was going to write it. Handwritten. But it's, I was going to write the comic book, so he decided that he knew better than me. 
And uh, so he wrote me this college rule notebook, and it was like not even just the one line. Some of them had, like, had two lines of scroll crammed in it about how I need to treat each of the characters as far as their personality and whatnot. Oh, and basically, the back of it also had this genie character. <laughs> Just a genie pony that he had made up that dominates Fluttershy. Um, and no, um, no. But you still dream of it. I do. Um, I got a death threat over the pony. You got a death threat? I am at oh, dance man. slot levels. I don't get death threats. Because they don't like ideas. how I write Rainbow Dash. What? Rainbow Dash? Yeah. I'd give you death threats to me. Yeah. But it's because I, I love the new My Little Pony. You guys don't understand. I love it. I think it is fantastic. And a lot of the fans are amazing. But then I've met two that two. have put me on edge. Well, that's what it tends to do that. Because it makes me think there's more out there. There is. But you don't if start you, it. Yeah, there's this great thing called the internet. A what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, but, it's a thing. But yeah, I got this email after the second issue going, I hope you're ready to die over what you've done to Rainbow Dash. Do you, do I don't you, like how cocky you've made her. I would just I reply and just go, people. yes, I am. It's like, it's like, what do yes. you respect me? Come at me, bro! <laughs> that's scary. Why are we telling scary convention stories? Well, that is like, that's my that's that's horror. Okay. But no, it's like, there is there is a line that there is one person that's willing to cross. And I learned one. that. Two, two, four, seven. A lot. Seven are willing to cross. There's but, a small, they gather at night. But no, it's I, I feel like I'm actually like, I've gone up from like a D-list comic book person up to like a C-list, because I I remember New York Comic Con, first issue of uh, My Little Pony just come out, and you, you had the number one book in North America. 125,000 copies sold. And, and you were sitting at your table here at Comic Con and beaming, and your little son, it's a, it's a best selling author, yep. Katie Cook. Damn I was, right. I was so happy for you, and you were just like on cloud nine. It was so awesome. It's but, like, fuck all you haters. Nice. But it, um, okay, so I've got a new story. Oh. This one's from, uh, I don't want to say this specific convention because it was really awkward. So it was, uh, it was like Saturday afternoon, the show is abs. You've been, uh, this wasn't this show. But you see the crowds, you can't move, you're crushed, you know, that's why you're sitting down here, yeah. enjoying our foolishness. So, um, you're getting crushed, people are moving like, you know, uh, en masse, and all of a sudden I noticed there was like this weird hole that opened up in the crowd at the convention in the aisle, and it was like really weird, and people were sort of awkwardly moving, and I thought, oh, it's a child shit themselves or something. And it, and it was, it was, a, it was a, a woman in a wheelchair, but she was like, terrible at it? Like, I know that's it. So she was like kind of ramming into tables and she running into people. Purpose. And she was just off and like taking up the entire aisle. So the whole aisle's breaking around her and another one can move. And everyone's like, awkward, like, do you want a hand? She, no, no, I'm, I'm self sufficient. I'm fine. <laughs> Banging into stuff. And I was like, oh, this is the most awkward thing ever. Like, I want to just like put a motor in the thing, but then she could run through people. And I was just like, oh God, this is so brutal. And she's trying and she's failing and she's trying and she's failing. And she's like, oh, my arms are so tired. And I'm like, oh God, she's, she's, really, she's really bad at being disabled. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, I, just, I really want to help. This is so awkward. This is, the and this worst is worst like, maybe she got, she must have got, right? And so, and so she's running, banging into stuff and she comes over to our table because I'm sitting beside Adam Warren, uh, amazing. Adam Warren and I, she comes over and she gets Adam Warren to do a commission of Oracle. And I'm just like, and she's got red hair and glasses and everything. I'm like, oh my God, this is the character she, like, she sees, draws inspiration from. That's so beautiful and wonderful and amazing. And we were both sort of touched, like, wow, this is so incredible. And then she asked me to do a sketch of Oracle and I did it, worked my fucking ass off on this thing because I was like, this person is so wonderful and I worked so hard and... We chatted there for about 15, 20 minutes, and then she crashed her way away and <laughs> broke people all the way away. And I was like, oh, it's so awkward, like I can't look. And the next day she came to my table and she just walked up. Liar! <laughs> and she didn't have glasses on. And I looked up and I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, did you guys like my cosplay yesterday? <laughs> I just thought you were really she, bad at being disabled. I just, she just, that was, 
Yeah, it was a costume. You did, your legs are fine. Like, <laughs> it was so awkward, and she was in, like so, you know. And, I, and I'm thinking like that was such a weird, inspirational, awkward moment. But then instead, it was like an hour of you wrecking people's kneecaps <laughs> for the sake of your cosplay. You should have jumped Why on did it. You do that? Like, like, yeah, like I just, wow. Like it's not like I wanted to be, you know, the killing joke. But at that moment, I was like, really? <laughs> Fuck, man, really? Do you know what? There were people there who were like wanted to cry because they thought you like, so bad. Damn you! Why aren't you disabled? <laughs> So that's a new one. So that I took that one to heart. I was like, well, I actually haven't seen that before. No. Sometimes you get that every so often. I, you think you've seen everything. You're like, oh yeah, here we go again. You know, like it's, we there's like a joke bingo card for convention stuff, and you fill it in and you go, and there is Captain Bo, right. <laughs> and that is Boba Fett size 46, and that is. You know, stormtroopers are clones. They don't look like that. Aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? You know, like, oh. okay, but like all sorts of weird. You just see the same kinds of elements over and over again. But then when you get a new one, it, it's feel. I've been to oh, probably over a hundred conventions. So when I get really surprised, like that's like, well, well, I'm impressed. You know what I mean? Like that's you are. You're special. <laughs> it's own, those things that stay with you. In your own beautiful way. What's, well, um, uh, I'm going to tell what happened yesterday is my new one. I, I really, this is and, dark. Uh, th this is the darkest timeline. Why are you doing this? This, this is, is too close to their hearts. Well, it's, you know what? Uh, because that dude's going to run in, whoever it is, it's probably a dude, right? I um, so I don't know if you know this Women are wonderful, 99.9999% 99, of the time. It's always a dude who comes over and does something well, fucking... Hi. Despite what my haircut is, I'm a lady. Uh, people get confused. It's the name Katie, throws them off. It's very nice the name Katie. And, uh, but yesterday, it means that I have dealt with a lot of stuff over the years. And it is not like I am the type of girl that gets hit on on walking down the street. I am just merely cute. It has gotten me a husband. I'm happy. It's awesome. But, uh, but yesterday, it's, I don't know, if I'm at my table, I do these little $5 mini watercolor paintings. So I'm doing one for this guy, and all what of a sudden... What booth number are you at? Uh, B08. Woo! Uh, B08? Look, B08. Zero A. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but this guy reaches over and he clasps both of my hands from over the table. What? what? Like... And then he lifts one of them up and starts drawing circles on my hand. What? And he says... Did you headbutt him? Well, I sat there. Well, first you're sitting there going, the fuck? <laughs> and he went, I know your husband isn't at this convention with you. Can I buy you a drink? And I put my hands... I pulled them away and put them under the table and got my hand sanitizer out. And in front of him, it's like, no. What do you say to that? I would have headbutt him. I'm Canadian. So what? I can't do those things. We're Canadians. We're mocking your entire culture here. I'm a Canadian that lives in Michigan. I defected. <laughs> Still Canada. <laughs> that's, uh, that's gross. Good job. But that doesn't happen to me. It doesn't. But now you've told these people there's going to be like five of them lined up. <laughs> I know your husband They're is like, here with you. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be but you know, the or someone's going to come over to my table and they're just going to be like, I didn't want you to feel left out of <laughs> Um, I have a mom haircut. The By the way, follow her Twitter for her wonderful observations of momitude. Good stuff. Owning a toddler is like having a tiny frat boy. <laughs> they vomit and don't care about anything you own. That is like a frat boy. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, yeah, the closest I've come to being hit on in like the past five years is a guy in Target that's like, I like your Star Wars messenger bag. And it was like, Why, thank you. <laughs> Oh, go on. <laughs>
<laughs> Which my husband is totally fine with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, nope, that's mine. I don't gotta worry about that. But I called him with that last night, he went, bullshit. <laughs> funny and some people find that attractive and that is the reason you married me. He was like, I married you because you have a great rack. <laughs> Were you wearing a cleavage shirt? And I said, no. He's like, that's why that's bullshit. <laughs> and now this got into an awkward territory about how weird my relationship with my husband is. <laughs> why is all these stories supposed to be about them? It's not about us. Would you like to know why my mascot for my husband is a blind fiddler crab? <laughs> No, yes. So, so I bought a house in the country and it has a barn. And uh, my husband set up a man cave out there and I named it the Masturbatorium. Because <laughs> he can get a Wi Fi connection out there. So he did his bonsai. So he's like, I'm going to go out and do my bonsai. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that what they're calling it? And finally it was like, this is now no longer convention story. This is, not, this is just segue into whatever. Your life is fucked. That's a letter. But yeah, and then I made a little sign, and I said the masturbatorium in nice Etsy-ish letters, and I put a little blind fiddler crab on it. Because <laughs> he has that big massive arm. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because uh, people ask me, so currently I'm, uh, I'm writing a, a comic for Image. I've done work for like uh, Dynamite in DC. I I'm, I'm, uh, teach at an art college in, in Toronto, all, and, I, and I go to conventions like a fool. And people always ask me, they go, well, how do you do this? How do you balance these things in my life? And I said, well, uh, I used to say that I had a very patient girlfriend, but then I don't have a girlfriend anymore. And they all go, oh. No, 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 I realized how awesome she was. I married that woman. <laughs> you need to find someone who can deal with this stuff, who can deal with this life, lifestyle choice. <laughs> this convention lifestyle choice we've brought onto ourselves. Because it's hard on people, it's hard on me. The, one of the reasons why I'm so out of it is, I was in England three days ago, I came home long enough to do my laundry, and uh, she's not, she loves me, she doesn't love me that much. Uh, and, then, uh, and then I came here totally jet lagged, like out of my mind. And I'm showing up, and you say the best things. You guys have been slammed by the, the jet lag. It's the best feeling because you do feel drunk all the time. You're just wandering around, and then all of a sudden your body will go, you know what? Hungry. And you go, oh, God, oh, what? You sleep. Oh, it pushes you to the ground, like it drives you. It's wild stuff. So I've been riding that for two days now. It's been I good. I am this big of an asshole all the time. <laughs> she's she's well-rested. That's accurate. People should not have to spend an hour in a room with me. <laughs> oh. 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 Fiddler crap. No. I'm, I am delightful. People invite me to parties. My mom thinks I'm cool. No, she doesn't. <laughs> that's, you know what? I, I, it, well, the other thing that's funny is when you work in this business and your parents, my parents are fucking amazing. They know nothing about anything in this stuff and they do a wonderful job at pretending they do, but then they fuck up all the details and it makes you want to kill them. Like, I wish they didn't know anything. So my the comic I do an image is called Skull Kickers. My mm -hmm. mom can't remember the name of my own comic that's been running for three years. She'll like call me and she goes, oh, I saw on your, um, on your journal, there's a, a new skull people. <laughs> oh, skull people. Oh, skull people. It's about guys killing monsters, and she's like, oh, it's, you know, yeah. So what what are you doing now? You've got a new project? Is it, are they paying you? Like, <laughs> yes, yes, I'm doing this thing. Oh, well, that's good, that's good. Um, well, tell them they should pay you more. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. But what's, I know that pop culture and movies and all this stuff and uh, comic books are becoming so m much more mainstream because my parents actually know some of the stuff. So my dad will, like, any nerdy stuff, they, they were not into at all. So they will like tell me, oh, there's, um, my dad says to me, uh, there's a movie coming out this a couple years ago. What's, what's this Watchmen? He's like, ah. is, is that good? 
Did you read that? And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty serious, Dad. I don't know if you're going to check it out. Oh, I think your mom and I are going to go see it next week. <laughs> now, my parents' movie reviews are the greatest convention story ever told. So I go, and they'll come back from a film, and I, I'm vibrating with excitement to phone them and ask them what they thought of a film. So I'll give you two quick movie reviews from my parents. First one is Watchmen. <laughs> I'm like, so what do you guys think of Watchmen? And my mom goes, okay, I've got a question for you. I'm like, yeah. The, the, um, the blue guy. Like, yeah, he's a computer, right? And I'm like, what? Like he's, like, he's not real. Like, they made him like that, right? I go, yeah. She goes, I told your father that he was a computer. <laughs> even the thing? Uh, I was like, yeah, even the thing. What, you think they had a stunt cock and then they put a computer guy around it? We got the best role for you, buddy. You're going to be Dr. Manhattan's wang. And then we're going to make a dude around it. There is somebody who's like, I am putting that on a business And she card. was just like, really impressed. I bet you were. So that was my mom's review of, of Watchmen. She was like, I had to go to Watchmen twice because it was such a long movie. And that guy has a, you know, he's, he's a computer. So, and my, my, my parents' review of Fellowship of the Rings is one of my greatest... I love this thing. So they went to see fucking Lord of the Rings. They've never read a fancy novel in their lives. Like if someone has a sword in the book, my mom would just put it down. Right? It doesn't matter what it is. I right? don't, oh, you know. So they go to see Fellowship of the Rings because everyone else is going. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, maybe they'll become fans or something. <laughs> so I call him up the next day. So did you guys see the, the Lord of the Rings? Yeah, I did. No, I said to my dad, sorry, for dad, what'd you think? He goes, well, that was a really long movie. I had to go to the can like four times. It was really loud and all sorts of shit going on. I don't know. There's more of them? I'm like, yeah, you know, they didn't finish the quest. He goes, yeah, I kind of figured that. How many more of these are you going to make? It's like, that's a great review, Dad. It's then my mom. And then she goes, your father went to the washroom four times. <laughs> I need to know about the Lord of the Rings. Dad went to the can four times. And she goes, I had to go three times. I had a cup of coffee. I didn't realize it was going to be so long. And I'm like, okay. And I said, I said, did you like the film, the story, the, the people, everything, all the beautiful special effects? She goes, you know, I did. Oh, but there was this thing. You know the, the little man. <laughs> I'm like, little man, the, li the guy, the little guy, the one, the guy. I'm like, Frodo, the main fucking character? She goes, yeah, the little man, he would do this thing, he would be holding that, the, 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 uh, the ring, the fucking ring, it's called the Lord of the Rings, for fuck's sake, woman, mother who bore me and raised me, god damn it, anyway, she's like, he would be holding it and they would always get really close to it, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of important, and she goes, and scrub those fingernails clean. Why would he go around with those dirty hands all over the countryside like that? With such dirty hands. And it just drove me crazy. Like I just, I felt like I was dirty looking at them. How would he go and they ate with those hands? Your mom needs a movie blog. I know. I was like, so you, dad went to the chitter four times and he had dirty fingernails? The guy with the thing, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so, uh, my parents, my parents read my Twitter and then they call and ask what questions. It's like, what does this joke mean? What does this joke? Yeah, my parents, my mom, she'll always say to me, she goes, um, she uh, started reading, she finally got online, she started reading my journal, and she calls me the day after they get the internet, and she figures out. And I'm on Google, and she calls me up. She goes, "How can you do that?" I'm like, "Do do what? What did I do? You say that word so much on your blog. That word. I'm like, what word? The oh, the worst word. The word I hate. I'm like, fuck. No, no. Why do you? Oh, 
oh, it's awful. How can you? You're a professional. You can't say that on. I said, fuck, mom. You can say the word fuck on the phone, too. No, please, stop. Oh. She goes, I wish you wouldn't use that word. People aren't going to like you. And I said, mom, sometimes you're going to drop the F bomb. And she goes, the what? And I said, you know, it's like an explosion. People don't expect. She just starts tittering. I'm like, oh, you're so cute. The next time she calls me, like three weeks later, and she goes, well, you're still bombing those Fs. After last year, uh, my webcomic, Children's Webcomic, was nominated for a Harvey Award for Best Webcomic, and I, I put it on, on my, my blog, again, on my Twitter, and my dad is like, so what's up with this webcomic? It's like, I've been doing this for three fucking years. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> and I was explaining it to him, and I was like, and he's like, explaining what a webcomic is, and explaining right. what my webcomic is that I self-publish. And he goes, okay, and you do this for free. It's like, yes, Dad, I put it up online for free every week. And he went, that is such bad business. <laughs> <laughs> And that's going to be the foreword of my next book. <laughs> this is bad business. Okay. Katie's dad. <laughs> my dad is the same person have as a, me. I have a great, I have a great, uh, so after my comic started coming out, um, I didn't realize, uh, my dad would always take us to the comic shop when we were kids. He actually started buying my comic. He goes down to the local comic shop and gets a subscription. Aww. But here's the best part. He shows up every month because he's, he's retired. He sees it on the blog. It came out that day. So he goes at the release day and he buys the new issue that he has a subscription for. And he walks in the door and he just hates being there because he doesn't know anything about comic books and he hates comic books. And so he walks up and he's like, um, my name is Joe Zopkovich and uh, I have a file here. You're holding a comic for me. And they're like, oh, hello. And they pull it out and then he goes, I'll pay for this. And then he just walks out. He does this for like five months until finally the comic book owner is like, look, can I ask you a weird question? Because you are, um, we have a lot of comic books here and clearly you really like this one. Uh, and you like fantasy. We have a lot of fantasy stuff and you, we got to show you all sorts of products and you seem really intent on reading this book, but there are lots of great comics out there and I'd love to show you other stuff. And he just looks at the guy like with this withering stare and he goes, my son made this. And he just walks out. <laughs> my duty to buy this. I didn't know this was happening. It's so awesome. So I go to the local comic book shop and I was talking to the guy and he just looks over and he goes, oh, you're Jim. And I was like, what? Oh, we talk all about you. Your dad is awesome. <laughs> Once per month, he's just praying, he just walks in and walks out like a robot. Yeah, I'm sure he loves you very much. That's so wonderful of him. And I was just like, oh God, that's so wickedly embarrassing. Well, I, I walked into my local shop after My Little Pony number one came out. You know, best-selling book IDW's ever had. Big, like, you know, crazy, right? And I go and I see the stack, like, this thick on the shelf. Yeah. And I go up to the desk and I was like, hi, I wrote that. Would you like me to sign all of them while I'm here? Because I went in and it's like, I did a special variant cover for that store. And I was like, I just wanted a copy of it. And this woman behind the counter goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this thing of, like, I made it for you! Let me sign it. And I kind of did, I tried again, I was like, I wrote it, it's, it's kind of, you have like 40 issues there. You ordered a lot of them. Can I sign it? And it'll be like a nice surprise for whoever comes and buys one. And no. Did you know that Michael Jordan got kicked out of a country? She said that to me. That was her segue to get me away from her. I was like... It's from there. I have a Sharpie. I don't need one of yours. She carries one with her always now. But it was just one of those things. It was like this crestfallen... And I was like, can I buy a copy of it? And she sat there and was like, okay, it'll be this much. Because normally it's like, I am not a diva. But in a comic shop that I frequent, when, when I in, do, there should be a parting of the waters. <laughs> it's like, and there's a variant cover that I did the artwork for. If I worked there or owned it, I would say, Katie, would you like one of these? 
because that's so sweet. You've got such a swell head. And I God. got treated like I don't even know how I can sit here with you. It's like pressing me off. But, <laughs> but it's like even a discount would have been nice. But no, it's like, <laughs> at this point, it's like, they don't want me to sign up. I'm sitting here going, but I do like this woman did you know not what? care. I bet you from her, she won on her blog that night. She goes, we had a crazy woman come in pretending to be Katie Cook. <laughs> Some of the most awkward shit ever. I wanted to punch her right in the face. But it was just one of those things. I was like, I made this comic. <laughs> but, you know, because normally it's like when I have a comic that's mine on the shelf, I, I sneak in and I sign it. I oh, do that's little, good. I do a little sketch in it. That's very cool. So when you, if you live in Michigan and you're in the one of my hometown stores, She's wrecked every copy. Ruined it. You cannot get those anymore. graded. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, just, those guys that get them graded? Yeah. You guys have seen where they slab the comics? They, they seal it in plastic so that... Because you they, don't read comics. Because I had a guy come over to me and he actually brought me a stack of comic books and he didn't want me to touch it because <laughs> it would, might be worth less, but he wanted me to sign it. So I had to like... Dip my like I, my signatures never look so fucked. Like, no one would ever go, that's autographed? They would be like... Jim suddenly had tremors. Like it just, like, no. yeah, like you can't touch. Yeah, no. Like it was, but and then uh, the, the dude after him actually had comics, and he noticed how much of a like I look like a tool. So he was like, hmm. So he left, and he came back, and he had cut a hole in the comic bag. It was like totally hermetically sealed, like psychotic. Like I want. Yeah, I, it was kind of cool in like a freaky way. Like uh, I, I wanted to wear a hazmat suit while I was touching my own comic. Like, mm, looks good, staples straight, it's good. Straight. One of the last times someone brought me a comic, and they have a person there to verify that it's yeah, you yeah. signing it. Yeah. Are I, you really Katie Cook? I signed it and then I licked it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, there. Uh, have you ever, All me. Have you ever had the reverse? Have you ever had where you get someone, you know, you're sitting there, you go, oh, can I go, I got the for you? And they're like, no. But you're, but you're at the thing and you're like, okay, but everyone else has got a sign thing. And this, so there was one guy, I had actually started signing it when he said no. <laughs> so his eyes said, do you want to sign? He goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You know, or you misspell someone's name. You ever misspell someone's name? You want a fucking autograph? Whenever. If you have a weird name, you should have it like on your forehead on a fucking... <laughs> like if you're Michael with like... Four E's in there or some yeah, shit. I will tell you God, how to fix that. Michael with two Y's or I, something. I hand it back and they say that's not how you spell my name. And I say, now it is. <laughs> <laughs> you just came over on the boat and I have renamed you. I will, I would, I, I end up turning it into a piece of art. It's all like, now that M is someone's eyebrow and you just start turning it into a face and you just. It's really awkward. You all draw well, a I box just, around the signature. I just told you how to fix that. I know. Now yeah. I'm just going to tell everyone how it is. I'm just gonna be like, nope. This is you now. This is how you live. Actually, I'm just going to misspell. And they're going to be like, that's not a spell. It's like I said, Katie told me. That this is how so you I spell it. Spell. I think we've got to wrap this up. All right. We I did know. not talk about enough convention stuff. Okay, so first thing you need to know, it's all going to be okay. I don't We're hate in a good place. everybody. And Emerald City Comic Con is one of the best conventions in the country. It is. Uh, give it up for all the people that work their ass off and all the volunteers here. When we told you, when we told you terrible stories about conventions, we weren't talking about any of you. Unless that you're a higher class of people. Is that hand guy here? <laughs> I talked about you. <laughs> You're a higher class right. of people and we love so, you. So, uh, Katie, where can they find you? B-O-8, Nardis Alley. So she's got B-O and she's at Table 8. I'm at I-14. Come on by and say hi. Check out her comic books. I'll tell you about the fox puppet. Wish you well. there's no small children around. Woo!